Alrighty, so today we're gonna kind of compare something like a digital optic like this. This one specifically is a Zulus DNT HD 5 to 20. Um, this is also day and night, right? So it's night vision. And then we have back here a traditional, right, optic. It has illumination, but for the most part, you don't need batteries or anything like that. So we're gonna start out with our Zulus here. So first of all, you can tell size-wise, right? This is much smaller, much lighter. I can throw up the specs on how heavy each is, but for me, the weight doesn't matter, but the weight might matter to you. Now, this Zulus is very small, very lightweight. Obviously, there's plenty of room on our pick rail too where we could put some kind of other optic, you know, off to the side or something like that. But anyway, on this digital optic, we've got a laser rangefinder, we've got a IR illuminator for night, and then we have our focus for our image and our focus on our reticle. We obviously have caps as well, at least on this side. So on an optic like this, we don't have any turrets at all. Everything is kind of done from these buttons here. Now you could look at that as a pro or a con. Number one, we can't bump anything really. If the optics turned off, we're not gonna go ahead and twist the turrets or anything like that, which we potentially could do with something like this because these turrets don't lock. Now, the obvious benefit to this is we can hook this up to an app. It'll do our ballistics for us. It'll tell us where to aim. It'll laser range find. It'll do all of that. The other thing we can do is we can obviously change our reticle color. We can change the brightness. And then again, in low light, if we were trying to shoot coyotes or something like that, right, we could obviously flip this onto night vision. Now, I believe in a lot of states like deer hunting and things like that, a night vision optic is banned. So that's going to count this one out if that applies to you. Now, as you can see, it's definitely a smaller form factor, it's lighter, but we do have the caveat that this will not function without batteries. Now, I had a couple of people comment on my first video that they had one of these and they died or wouldn't work below freezing. I have not tested that. Um, I probably will toss this thing in the freezer um, for a couple hours and see what happens. I'm assuming it's just the batteries that are dying, but I don't know, right? I can't verify whether that's a real thing or not didn't happen to me, but it's also summer here. When you have a traditional optic, right, that can't happen, right? There's no electronics that can go bad here. However, obviously mechanically, we could have problems as well. So I guess maybe what it comes down to is do you trust the mechanical um, nature of a standard optic or do you trust more of a technology, right? I mean, that's going to be pretty well up to you. Again, with the way this one is shaped, you could easily put you know, a red dot off to the side, something like that, where if this completely failed, you'd still have an option. But anyway, this one connects to an app. This one you can obviously record through. For me, that's what attracted me to this because I record a lot through scope cams and things like that. So if you're trying to record a hunt or something like that, this is gonna be a good option. Now, trigger cam is also a good option. And I have another kind of scope cam that I plan to have coming in that we're gonna test here soon, but the other thing we need to consider here is this optic specifically only goes to five to 20 power, right? A traditional optic, we can get magnification ranges that, you know, really, I mean, you get as much power as you want nowadays. Now, if you're in the market for like a 60 power optic, you're probably not gonna want this, right? This is 20 power and it's also digital. But if you're somebody hunting or doing short range or doing a lot of night hunting, five to 20 is probably fine. So what I'm gonna do is I already shot a 10 shot group with this optic, right? This 36 power discovery, which I really like this optic so far. Um, same price range as this, right? These are both about $600, $700. And then I'm gonna go out on the range here in a minute and I'm gonna shoot and zero this. So we're gonna see if there's any real difference in our group size to see if this digital scope is gonna be as accurate um, as far as both for me as a shooter and just holding zero and things like that. Um, I feel like aim point being a little more fine on a traditional optic might be better for shooting groups, but I don't know that for a fact. You are going to see the footage through this camera. Now, this is exactly what I'm seeing, right? Whenever we look through a scope cam on a um, traditional optic, we have a degradation in our quality because we are recording through an optic. This isn't like that, right? This is just a camera and you're looking at the screen anyway. So that could be provide better footage. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out here. So let's hit the range. Let's see how this digital optic does compared to our traditional optic. And we'll come back to the bench and we'll talk about it. All right, we're out here on the range. This is my 6BR 28 inch barrel. 
Um, we just talked about what we're gonna do here, but we're gonna sight this DNT 5 to 20 in. I got two rounds that we're gonna use to sight it in, and then we've got, that'll warm us up too, and then we're gonna do a 10 shot group. We're shooting for like, you know, half to 0.75. I would consider that about the same as what I did with the traditional optic. Now, conditions wise, we're about the same. Um, it's early morning, there's no mirage, there's almost no wind at all, kind of like it was uh, actually last night when I shot the uh, other optic. So let's go ahead and like I said, we'll use two shots to get us sighted in. I bore sighted just like I did the other day. I don't have any chronograph out or anything like that because that's not really relevant here. Um, we already know what this load shoots. Okay, so we're going to try to get, we're going to go ahead and start recording. So we're recording. Um, I'm going to try to find a radical color that's going to work the best. I think maybe yellow. No, not yellow. Black, I guess, maybe. Oh, that's kind of hard to see, too. You know what I'm going to do? Well, I don't know. Let's, we're, gonna, we're trying to figure this out here because I can't really... I can see the white dot on the center there. So I guess that's what we're going to use. We're going to use the white dot on the center. In the last video with a, you know, a traditional optic, I could really be fine with my aim point and aim us on uh, the tip there of that diamond, but that's not really working out here. So let's try and see how close we are to zero. Okay, so we have that there. Now we need to go into our settings. Oh, I can't do that while recording. I forgot about that. Okay, for those of you who watched my first video with this and I did something weird and lost my zero, it looks like there's like A, B, C, D, like there's different zero points in there. So that's one thing you need to be careful about if you go into the settings there. I did not notice it until just now. I might have screwed it up again. I think I have, I think I was on A, but I did not notice it was there. It's one thing that I found with this optic. It can be a little frustrating because it's not simple, right? It's, you know, you kind of have to pull up the manual and look at it. Okay, let's see if I didn't screw up. And if I didn't screw up, we should be pretty well zeroed here. Okay, let's see if we mess things up here or if we have a good zero now and we can complete our test. No. So we absolutely botched that. Okay, so I went back in, took a double check at the manual, try to figure out what I did wrong there and we'll try to do it correctly this time. Um, in my opinion, I think having multiple buttons do different things and having it be so optional, all right, so many adjustments and things like that has made it a little bit of a challenge for me. So hopefully we're now zeroed. Um, I'm just gonna shoot one to be sure and then we'll load up our mag there. Okay, we're gonna go to our target down on the right here. Again, this is about as clear as I can get the image. So it's not quite as clear as what I would really, really prefer for this kind of shooting, but it's the best I can do. So let's see how bad we did zeroing. Okay, I'm gonna drive over there and check and see because I actually cannot see. I think I did, but I can't see if my point of aim is correct. Okay, so fortunately what I thought I was impacting on that right edge of that orange dot there um, is actually where it was impacting. Again, I thought I could see it there, but there's just a little bit of pixelation that I wasn't sure and I didn't want to shoot, you know, nine rounds into the dirt here without checking. So there are some drawbacks, right, to only having 20 power and having a digital optic. I think, again, this could be corrected for my use, you know, shooting small groups at 100 yards if we had a little more magnification or a little clearer image at distance here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna shoot the nine more. Again, I did come off the gun, but I, I, right, I had to. So let's see how these group here. Gonna try to do the best we can to shoot a good group. Take a 
but that one's a pretty similar spot because I can't see it. Okay, now I can see that we are actually hitting the target. Okay, so that is all 10 there. Now, the group doesn't look bad, right? Like, that's definitely a usable group. I can't really specifically tell where all the impacts are, but I believe that's probably right around one MOA. Now, my guess is that most of that, you know, additional group size there, which we'll hit the bench and I'll show you, is probably just from my lack of a really fine aiming point, right? Like, you guys are looking at the exact same thing as me and, um, you know, through the camera there and, like, I can see the dot, I can see kind of some shots, but I also can't really pick things out like I would with a traditional optic. So let's head back to the uh, bench and we'll talk about it a little more. All right, so overall, group size really didn't look too much different, right? We had this one kind of fly low. We also had this one fly low with glass. Obviously the glass group, right, with the discovery optics a little better, right? We're a little worse with the digital, but like they don't really look that much different right? They're probably pretty close to the same group. The one thing is I can see every bullet hole, right? With the glass optic where on this, you know, digital scope at a hundred yards in daylight, I can see like a cluster of bullets, right? I can see these out on paper, right? That like those. And I think that's just not what this was made for, right? If you're just going to sit there and punch paper, you're going to use a glass optic. Now, there are some situations where obviously, right, it gets it done, right? Like this is a 10 shot group, um, you know, like it gets it done for load develop and things like that. My biggest complaint with this is the fact that it doesn't have more zoom and on 20 powers, it's not quite as crisp as what it is on the lower powers. The other big complaint for me, just because I'm so used to using a traditional optic, I can use it without thinking, right? I know how to zero it. I know how all the, well, there are no buttons, right? Where this, because I'm not as used to it, I've had to grab the manual a handful of times. Now, as most of you know, like I don't read the manuals, right? I only pull out the manual if I can't figure it out on my own. I really think that there should be more buttons here that are labeled more clearly, where most of these have multi-functions so sometimes you get lost and you just don't know what you're doing, right? Like these buttons all do the same thing. I, I personally, again, this is just my opinion from my little use. I would have put more buttons here that had single function, right? So you would know exactly what each button does. Again, with time, you will understand this. I've gotten better at it, but like it has been a little frustrating to me at times trying to use these buttons here and I've had to get go literally read the manual. So if you're not like a techie person, you're not going to read the manual, like, I don't know, this may not be for you. Again, I don't have any experience with any other real night vision optics. Maybe this is just the way they all are. But for daylight, like, you know, it is more complicated to use than a traditional optic. Anyway, that is going to be my last video with this here. I'm going to send it back to them. So this is just my honest opinion on the difference between these two. There are some times where you would just want this, right? Like if you were going to do any kind of night hunting or a lot of recording or something like that. But for what I do, just shooting paper 99% of the time and never using anything at night, I'm going to go with a traditional optic. Again, your results may vary. I do love the rangefinder aspect. I really wish, which there are some new optics, right? The new Burris that has a, some, you know, some of this tech inside of a traditional optic and um, hopefully that'll be kind of the future so hope you guys enjoyed this one thanks for subscribing and we'll see you next time